All right, so <clears throat> what we've got here is um, we've got a sensor from a, a second hand differential front axle assembly and not real sure if if these tone wheels or wheel speed sensors are are any good but to get them out um, it's easier just to cut it like actually cut the wire and then drag it out through um, so if you need to replace one then that's what you're better off doing because there's not enough room in that actual in that gap there I don't know if you can see that, but in that gap, just through here, there's not enough room in there to actually pull it through from either end. So if it's got the connector on it, it won't come through. Um, trying to get that through as well, you'll end up just breaking it. So what you're better off doing is um, saving yourself the hassle and just cutting it. This one here was already cut, but um, what I'll do now is show you on a uh, couple of different devices how you can test it. Now, the first one is um, a multimeter, just a very basic one. Um, I'll just turn that head torch off there. You put on AC and basically you're looking for a uh, influx of current, but to start with, we need to strip it back and bare the wire. So use a, um, a cutter like that or you can just use snips and bear it open. Now these, I don't believe, are um, polarity sensitive, so it basically means that as long as they've got some sort of connection, um, and it's a good connection, and it's not too far away from the actual the um, ABS computer itself, then that that's um, all it's going to matter. So we'll just. Um, I do have other clips for this, but we'll just snip snip a bit of that wire off there because uh, this stuff's probably a little bit corroded after being out in the weather for a while. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, is look to see if we're going to get any sort of uh, voltage coming from this because basically that's a um, a generator of sorts which is inside here because you've got your your tone wheel as that spins it's creating a magnetic field to collapse um, probably a bit more technical than that but you know there's plenty of other videos that can show you that sort of thing um, so now we're looking to see if it's going to actually generate any any sort of power uh, influence by just turning turning that wheel and as you can see it's uh, it's doing that quite okay so that's a good sign that's what we want to see if these are affected in any way you wouldn't get any sort of reading um, there's also there's also a resistance test that you want to have a look at um, there are specs but basically you know around that one one kilo ohm um, is is great, exactly where you want it to be. So so far looking very good. Um, the next one to look at is an oscilloscope. I do have one. It's not flash, but we'll just see if we can generate a signal from it. Effectively, we're just looking for a, a nice little sine wave pattern going through the screen. So we'll just connect that up. Got our uh, our tool here. Clip it on there. And the other end, the earth. Doesn't matter which way they go around. It's not polarity sensitive, so we're looking for some sort of signal to come through. Is that on hold? What is that on? No. Let's put it on auto and see if it detects it. It's not doing it either. Right, so just had to change the settings there a little bit, um, just to get the the device to pick it up. But anyway, what you should see as you're turning the rotor or the um, 
the ABS hub is that sort of nice little pattern with nothing missing in it. Obviously if you could get it so you can continuously keep it turning and you could monitor and, it, and if it was fluctuating up and down as it's turning around then you're going to have a problem. So that's pretty much telling us that um, this wheel sensor is going to work. So what we're going to do now is um, use some decent decent quality um, automotive wire that has a, an outer sheath to protect it from heat and moisture and we're just gonna basically use stranded um, copper and you know recreate the um, the cable put it back together and see if it works hopefully it does but there's the the cable that's been cut um, that's what comes down from the other side of the vehicle um, so yeah what we're gonna do now is is join it up to here and obviously there's a nice little chunk there missing so first of all we've got to bear that back make sure that's a nice uh, a nice bit of uh, cable to use we've got, we've got a nice thing of heat drink here so that's a bonus always remember to put that on first before you put the wires together otherwise it's a little bit difficult to put on after, after you've uh, put the wire together so yeah we've got to tin that um, to roughly work out how much uh, cable we're going to need it's going to sit in there like so uh, it's going to follow the Follow the rough, rough guide of uh, using the brake, the brake line, the hydraulic brake line to uh, get that rough distance. I'm going to add a little bit more to it, just um, you know, for a bit of a bit of stretch. I guess you could do this if you were going to uh, do. Exp extended brake lines and you know a uh, extended shock absorber and spring combination or if you've just got a faulty sensor it you know it all works the same all right just a um a quick note with uh i guess trying to find out how long you want to cut these what you do is you just stick your wire through the end and then go all right well that's covered and then you butt your finger out and then that way you know that okay I just need to cut that bit off so instead of um, having to guess you go right well that's that's gonna cover it you know just like so either end all uh, all nice and neat and you just make the next one the same length so a little trick there all right so this is a this is the old juggling act that we all just love trying to hold these things together while they're getting soldered you don't want to put too much solder on there because the longer the distance of that solder um, <clears throat> basically the longer the potential to have a crack so pardon me you really want to have it nice and short so that way there's if there is flex it won't crack off the ends and cause you dramas that way so we'll just give that a bit of a, a bit of a cool down which is definitely she soldered through there and we'll slide up the uh, the heat shrink and just use the exhaust on the um, on the heat gun here oh, sorry, on the heat gun on the soldering gun soldering iron and just give it a nice little going over So 
have all done this before. And what you can do is um, use a product that uh, is called vulcanizing vulcanizing tape and it will stretch around and uh, sort of hold itself in position a whole lot better than what your standard sort of tape does. Right, now this bit up the top here will do very much the same. It's going to get in there with our little uh, cutter sheath stripper and uh, you don't want to go two bananas with this because if you slice through it and go too far you'll get into the wire so that one there's right now Now, what I like to do with this is actually leave yourself more than what you need just to hold it in place while you're soldering it, right? So, if you look at this one here, um, look at this one. What I've done is I've got <coughs> I've got it going past where that solder actually needs to be. Um, so that what I'll do is I'll um, just solder this bit here and then trim from there up away. But what that extra little bit is doing, it's holding it together so I can do that. And I'll do the same with the other side. Now, solder isn't for everyone. There's a lot of rally cars that will not solder their, when I say rally cars, there's a lot of rally cars that don't have and, you know, much soldered as far as the wiring uh, goes because the vibrations that you get in a rally car are quite intense. So what they tend to do is use, um, actually use scotch locks. And that, that's a reason why I'm only going to go on a little, little bit of the way on this. And as usual, the... Uh, Heat shrink has started to shrink itself down because of the heat transfer. So, I'm going to have to trim a bit of that off. How annoying. Right, so I'm going to put some of this stuff on here. Um, it's grey mastic. And what it'll help do is keep the moisture out. But what you're going to do with it is... Uh, really sort of thinly apply it so that it's not like a big bulky bit of kit when you go to put some tape around it and then that way it will be you know near enough to 100% as far as sealing goes probably adds a bit of um, integrity as well just to keep the tape on there um, it's kind of like a industrial blue tack, uh, but I'll just leave it like that. Very sticky, very tacky. Now I'll just um, follow up with the tape, and it won't, definitely won't allow itself to unravel. When it's stuck to this grey mastic, we use this stuff on joints when they're underground in, um, you know, telecommunications and that sort of thing. So it's very, very sturdy stuff. So, just like that. It's not too bad for a hack job.